presentation that I'm going to give today really involves the, the need for accurate data. As a land surveyor, uh, there's a lot of different grades of data that are introduced into GIS projects and we've, uh, we've learned that especially in the urban and oil and gas environment, there was a phenomenon called the Barnett Shell in Texas and previous all the oil and gas experience that I had was out where there were more cows and trees than people and now we're working in very high urban uh, high, highly populated where there are much lots and there's infrastructure that's 30, 40, 50, or even older than that, 60 plus years old, kind of like the infrastructure Boris was talking about, but a lot of it's below ground. And, uh, you know, GIS is a great tool and we use it all the time. We use buffering and all these things, but if we don't really know the accuracy of the, of the t objects that we're buffering and stuff, uh, we, we can have challenges, which we'll show you in a minute. This is a base map. There's different brands of GPS. This just happens to be the flavor that we use in the north. This is, many people have heard of Dallas. Some of you guys from not from the state, United States, but this is just west of Dallas. Fort Worth, Texas is where the edge of the Barnett Shell is. It covers, I don't know, 14 or 18 counties. The natural gas is very prevalent and easy to get out of the ground, much like they found in many other shells now that they found out how to how to get it out of the ground with water. Another base map, we hear about base maps. This is a base map that just shows the highways and some information around, but uh, base maps in Texas are very important because we have no rectangular land system. We only have what we call meets and bounds, which say beginning at a forked mesquite tree, thence 1900 barrows to a one-man rock along the creek, blah, 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 and, and we, our job as surveyors is to go out and retrace this on the ground. So we use survey grade GPS to do that. Buffering and proximity is extremely important because of regulations from municipalities and the fact that the DOT, Department of Transportation in Texas and the United States controls oil and gas operations. So when we're down in South Texas, for example, where there are not many people, there are more cows than people in each county, then it doesn't really matter much about where they run a pipeline but it, it matters a great deal where pipelines or where well pads are located for exploring for natural gas in these urban areas. The red dots you'll see on the right are surveying points. We only use survey grade equipment and procedures, whether it's GPS or whether it's turning angles and distances with the traditional surveying technologies. Every job we do is geo-referenced and tied to NGS, the National Geodetic Survey, so that we have repeatable coordinates and we can share our data. And a lot of our clients provide high resolution aerial photos, which you'll see in several of these exams. This was a very famous site that we worked on for quite a long time because there was so much rubbish that was all steel. It was an old railroad yard. And for those of you guys that have surveyed or used a metal detector to look for uh, property corners, which is what we use, pipes, and, I mean the, the current age, it's not just rocks and trees, we actually have pipes in the ground or steel rods. Finding the evidence of the corners was interesting and there was so much debris in the way, we ended up mapping everything with survey grade data so we could buffer what we thought were permanent structures, we didn't know what was permanent and what wasn't. So GIS was the tool that we used to communicate to our client instead of just CAD files, which is what normally surveyors use. On the 7th Street, again, we took a complete inventory of everything. When in doubt, tie it in. And in, in those words, tie it in, means when I speak to people that are not GIS or GPS literate, I tell them we give it an earth address. The speaker yesterday, the governor, said everybody says, show me my house. Well, the house is tied to a street address. Every position that we take to a centimeter or less in accuracy or precision has an earth address, a latitude, longitude, depending upon the metadata, what projection and datum that we use to project to. So we use state plane coordinates because that's what our clients use in the natural gas and oil industry in Texas. After we uh, gather the survey data, we don't directly put it into a GIS. We process the data. We do a statistical analysis to make sure whether it's a closed traverse using traditional surveying tools where we're actually looking through and measuring distances and angles, or whether you're using surveying 
grade GPS, we always collect the raw vectors so that we can process and give it a statistical analysis, a point, a descriptor, and the quality of the measurement before we ever put it into a GIS map. Back to the 7th Street project, before we drew any buffers from the existing buildings, which were very important for them choosing a pad site to drill from, and again, many of you from the oil and gas industry may know that it's common, but I've been surveying the oil and gas for 20 years and I've never seen 28 wells dr drilled on one pad seven feet apart, but that's very, very common in the shell formations is to have one pad and have the rig move seven feet, go down a mile, over a mile. Pull it up, go seven feet, down a mile, over a mile. So it's very important that when we survey these pads that we really know where they are and that the geologists know where they are because they're depending on the surveyor to provide information that's going to accurately allow them to get where the honey hole, where the gas pockets are. The use of aerial photography is used many times in GIS for buffering, but if we don't have really good knowledge of where these objects are in relation to latitude, longitude, or earth addresses, or coordinates, then we can buffer, but we can buffer in error. So before we utilize any aerial photography, regardless of the accuracy or the tightness of the pixels, we go out and ground truth the building corners, whatever the objects are that we're going to be buffering from. Too many good old boys guessed 159 feet or 249 feet, and the clients ended up in lawsuits or buying buildings or buying apartment complexes uh, because of their lack of uh, accuracy in measuring or their assumption of looking at an aerial photograph and drawing a circle and assuming that the aerial photograph had coordinates and when they read it into their GIS project that the coordinates were actually accurate, repeatable and precise. Pipelines can be very puzzling, extremely in an urban environment. It's not uncommon for oil and gas company, a natural gas company, to reroute a pipeline because the landowner will want more money or whatever reasons or because they are an attorney and they want to argue and the natural gas companies want to get the gas to market. That's their objective is to get it out of the ground into the market. So it can be puzzling and the other reason it can be puzzling is because what's beneath the ground. As a land surveyor even though I cannot see beneath the ground it is my job to use ground penetrating radar, to use a shovel, to use hydro excavation, to do whatever it takes to find the old sewer lines the old uh, utility lines that exist, Fort Worth is 70 plus years old, at least as far as the utilities, it's a lot older than that as far as being a city. And uh, there are many caves, uh, not caves, sinkholes. There are pipeline bores where there have been houses fall during the boring process because there was no knowledge of these underground mishaps that have been created because of storm sewers and other underground utilities that have eroded the underground and created these caverns. Again, pipeline locations without good information of where these objects are, a pipeline route is usually not chose by the surveyor. However, as you'll see in the next diagram, we got to work on a golf course on this deal, which as a surveyor, that's always been a dream of mine. <laughs> no cutting, no chainsaw, not allowed. And they even give you a golf cart to drive around on. It's a very, very much pleasurable experience compared to walking through organic barbed wires, which what I call the brush in South Texas that we're used to. So this was a golf course. We were choosing helping, helping create a functional pipeline route because of existing houses and because of lots. As you'll notice, I don't have a pointer, but there are houses and there's also lots that are going to have houses and there's regulations and municipalities had that there had to be specific distances from these pipelines from houses or structures and our logic said well if there's a lot there and there's a house there then probably we should respect the growth of these future subdivisions 